What's up everybody, it's CMP with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com. Don't forget to stop by Studio1Tutorials, pick up your premium membership, it is 50 cents a day. And also please don't forget to stop by CMP Kits, get yourself some kits, get yourself some loops, get yourself some MIDI, get yourself some templates and get it now. Uh, hit me up on IG at Craftmaster3, it's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Follow us on Spotify, the Spicy Sundays podcast for everything producer culture. Um, uh, live every Sunday on the MG The Future YouTube channel. Now today, I want to go into part two of the FL to Studio One um, playlist. This is going to be going over sample one. Now inside of FL Studio, when you open up FL Studio, you were greeted with a step sequencer. And then on your step sequencer, you can drag samples uh, to what they label is a channel rack. Now the channel rack has been developed ever since FL Studio or was called Fruity Loops and it was in version one and the entire um, FL experience revolves around the channel rack. Um, the way that other DAWs are designed is your entire experience in, in the DAW revolves around what's called the arrange window. Um, I think it's, I, I'm pretty sure it's called playlist in FL studio, right? So the way that, the way that DAW, the way that studio one works is it's a linear DAW, meaning you build, you build your track from left to right. And the way that you build it is by adding layers of instruments. Okay. Layers of instruments or layers of audio tracks. So your channel rack is, is a sampler, right? Um, the sampler inside of Studio One is called Sample XT. Sample One XT. So the way that you get to it is you press B to go to your browser, click on the instruments tag, and just drag your sample one out here. Now, once you have once you have a sample one out here, um, probably one of the first things that you know that that's going to cross your mind to figure out if you can even use this doll or not is how do I put an 808. Um, how do I cut it? How do I set it to cut itself? And how do I make it so that I could use it? Right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my, as I'm going to go to, um, I'm gonna go to my drums folder and I'm gonna find an 808, right? So we'll go ahead and drag this one in. And if I play it on my MIDI keyboard, I have an 808. Boom. Now, if you want to tune your 808s and figure out, um, you know, if you don't have them all labeled like I do to know what the key of them are, you can go to your effects tab right and uh scroll down to where you see the tuner drag that onto your sample one all right and you go ahead you go ahead and you click this um click this little thumbtack right here and that'll pin it so that it'll stay up now if i press the c key you see that you see that i'm getting i'm getting This is like, <clears throat> it's not pitch centered. So if you wanted to fine tune this, you can use this tune knob. You see how you're like minus, you know, 40 cents or whatever. You can, you can offset that. Right. So let's, let's, let's scroll to one. One of the great things about the, uh, about the, the sample one is the way that it lets you browse in context and we'll build we'll build out a drum beat so i can show you more about that in a second but what i mean is if you drag a sample over from a folder using this left and right you can now scroll through that folder right and you could do this while the beat is playing okay so say i have let's find a uh let's find an 808 that isn't on c so you see, I'm pressing the C note and this is telling me this is an E. All you have to do to, to switch that where you guys would normally like right click a key on the piano, just go to root. That's the root note. Change that to what the tuner is telling you. So that's going to be an E3. Now when I press C, we get the C note. That's all you got to do to tune an 808, right? So now that we got our 808 tuned, um, we might want to start uh, building, building a kit. So like I, so like I said, once you have, um, once you have a, a folder that you like to browse through, 
um, to make things really fast instead of always having to go in the browser, go to files, find your stuff. What I like to do is I like to click this button right here and select store preset, right? So you can go ahead and you can go ahead and make this, you know, name this, you know, whatever you want to name it. Um, and you can, you can create subfolders. So I have subfolders for my 808s, claps, uh, snares, hats, and perks, right? And I'll show you, I'll show you why that's awesome. So once you, you know, once you have that saved, if you go back to your instruments and you click this little, a little uh, triangle next to it, what it's going to do is it's going to show you all of your presets and all of your subfolders. So now I can go to uh, these OZ kicks and put them in there. I can, I can find a snare. We'll go to, we'll go to this, we'll go to this kit right here, drag it in. And I want to find some hats. You know, we can use these murder beats hats. And now in order to, you know, in order to start, start creating a pattern, um, all I got to do is go into the piano roll, right? click something like this in all right so say i have this and i want to you know let's let's put a quick 808 pattern here um make sure that your 808 is on mono that's the same thing as cut itself you have two different options for 808s you have normal which is um which is this is going to be like how you work in fl studio when you go in and you like draw that box uh normal it's it's just gonna it's just gonna play for as long as you draw the note right so it's already set to that um if you want it to just ring out you can you could select this to one shot and what one shot is going to do is it's going to play the length of the sample no matter how no matter how small the note is that you draw right so if you're if you're used to your if you're used to the fl workflow you want to set to set it to normal right all right so you have something like that now say you know say you got this pattern going and you don't like the snare um you know once you have your preset saved you can you can listen to the beat to you see how I you see how I went on this hi hat and I changed and I changed the velocity down here to make sure that um that it really sticks out you want to go to this amp envelope right here see this velocity meter and just change that to 100% so it's more pronounced yeah all right so once you have that, you might be saying, all right, cool. Like that's like, that's, that's, that's what's up. Let's make a beat. Um, let's get a melody in there. So I'm going to go to, I'm gonna go to one of my loops here. Um, go to files. This is from my just loops pack on cmpkits.com. Go ahead and find a loop. Okay. So the good thing, if you guys didn't watch the browser video, the good thing about the browser and the everything in everything in Studio One, the way that is built to work is that browsing in context while the song is playing is super easy, right? So if I have this playing and I have this and I have this clicked in my browser, it's gonna automatically time stretch all these loops so that it plays in the right tempo, so you can catch a vibe. All right, 
so I think I want to use this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drag it in. Remember, everything's drag and drop. I'm gonna drag it into the into the uh, session. And um, Studio One will automatically time stretch whatever you drag in to this session to the length, uh, you know, so so that it loops on beat, right? So what I want to do with this sample is I want to chop it up uh, and reverse it, right? So the easiest way to do that is I'm going to, as I'm going to drag this, because I don't need all this over here, I'm going to drag this to the left, right? I'm going to click on this and I want to go to audio. I'm sorry, I'm going to go to event and I want to bounce the selection, right? What bouncing is, that's like render, okay? So go ahead and click bounce. Uh, the key command for that is command B. And what I want to do is, is I want to reverse it. So I'm going to go again to audio. These are these are all your different audio helpers when you right click on something in the arrange window. Um, and I'm going to reverse audio control R right again, not in the channel rack. You're going to find this stuff in the arrange window. All right. So boom. So now that so now that I've got that and this is stuff that you would normally see like either in channel rack or you would see it in Edison or you would see it in Slice X. And a lot of the stuff that you guys are used to having a plug in for, you don't need a plug in for it's 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 basic audio editing that occurs in the arrange window. Right. So now that I have this reversed. All right, that's sounding all right. Now again, this uh, I'm my my uh, 808 is is on a C, right? So I want to make sure this matches with the uh, with the key of the track, right? So what I'm gonna do is since this is an E minor, I'm gonna shift this down from E. All right, if I go backwards on the keyboard, I'm I'm in E, D sharp, D, C sharp, C, right? So that's one, two, three, four notes. Um, in order to do that, transposing is is how you go up and down the scale. I went down four notes, negative four and transpose. Now we'll be in key. All right, so that's all right, but I, I want to kind of spice it up. I want to chop it up. Um, the easiest way to chop something up is to change your quantize to how big you want the chops to be. So say I'm going to do I'm going to do a quarter note chops, right? So that's going to give me a chop. Um, that's going to give me a chop on every note. You could, you know, if you wanted to, you could go through it and just with the cross tool, just double click on it and it'll, you, you know, but that's why would you do that? That takes so much time. Um, the easiest way to do it is right click on it, go to audio. I'm sorry, go to event. And right here, this command split it grid, whatever you have the grid at the grid at, it's going to split whatever you have selected. So whether it's a MIDI note in piano roll or whether it's an audio region, right? I have this uh, set to a custom key command. So, so it happens really fast for me. Um, just make sure that you do it, <laughs> that you do it in the right window, right? So boom. Um, so once you have this and you've got this and you've got this uh, split up the quarter notes and it's all, and it's all um, highlighted, right click here select send a new sample one and now you've got all these chops all right so i just played so i just played something and you know what i kind of liked it and i don't remember what i did um if you press your i key right you press your i key you're gonna see this you're gonna see this window that's called the inspector you can also get to it by clicking the i okay um, down here, you see this where this said retrospective record. If I click that in, it's gonna it's gonna always remember what I recorded. So now I can go into my piano roll, set this to quarter notes. I'm gonna press Q to quantize. That works right there. I love it. All right. So I'm gonna just fix these notes real quick. Boom.
All right. So now that I have that, um, I want to listen to it and make sure there's no there's no pops and clicks in the rec in the in the sample. Yeah. See, that's that's no good. So all you got to do to change that is just take your um, just um, uh, you click you click one of the samples, hold down shift, click the last sample, and then just go to just go to your amp. Um, go to your amp envelope and uh, change the attack a little bit. Scoot, scoot it up. And much better. So that is that is how you get going with that is how you get going with sample one. Um, it's super easy. There's the, you know, there's the, it's, it's really powerful. Remember, right click, send the sample one as your friend. Remember any, any type of, any type of editing you have to do of audio in a loop, um, or just the audio file period, that's going to occur in the arrange window, not in the sampler. And then once you, once you finish that editing, then you right click on that, send it to the sampler and then go ahead and use it. And again, you see how easy it is to get up and run it. So, so we're, what we're going to be getting into later is, um, you know, I'm going to do a full piano tutorial, a piano roll tutorial. I'm also going to show you guys the steps, the step sequencer and just keep on building out this series to make it easier to transition and have fun from FL Studio to Studio One. So you guys keep it simple. Do not be basic. And we will see you on the next one.